Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of kings and Lord of lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say with hearts of praise, Hallelujah. Now, I trust that you are feeling blessed in Jesus this morning and that you are hungry to see what the Lord would have us to learn from his word. Now, we are in Hebrews chapter 4 today, and it's interesting because the message of today seems to be wrapped around the idea that God is love. However, the author of Hebrews begins chapter 4 by stating, let us therefore fear. Now, while it is true God is a God of love, he is a God that is to be reverenced, and even more than reverenced, but to be feared. If you were to look up this word fear in the concordance, in the Greek, you would find that it means to be terrified, to be shaken to your core. And we have to remember that in chapter 3, we have just finished reading that God has swore in his wrath in verse 11, some shall not enter into my rest. Paul speaks of who these are in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 13. He says, some of these are false apostles. They are deceitful workers. They transform themselves into the apostles of Christ. And do not marvel by this, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers, Satan's ministers, also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. They will appear to be ministers of the Lord Jesus, but their message will be corrupt, deceitful, and full of unrighteousness, and their end will be according to their works. He says in chapter 12, verse 5, be sure that you do not fall into this category. Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Try yourself, test yourself, prove your own self. And it is with this same warning that in our text today, we begin by the writer warning us, let us therefore fear, unless a promise being left of us entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, we are told to cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. And so what we're beginning to see is that this letter written unto these Hebrews isn't a feel-good letter, but a kick-in-the-pants letter. We are being told not to take our Christian practice, our Christian duty, our Christian service lightly. But by proclaiming the name of Jesus, there is a huge responsibility that comes with that. In verse 2 of chapter 4 of Hebrews, he says, Unto us the gospel was preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached, it did not profit them. It was not mixed with faith in them that heard it. It was not mixed with obedience. We which have believed the gospel that was preached unto us do enter into rest. As he said again, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. Now, if you have read chapter 4, you're aware that the context of this passage is the idea of rest. And this idea of rest is twofold. First, we see in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6, that Jesus is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises. In verse 13, it says, A new covenant will come upon the arrival with the Messiah, for he has made the first old, and that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. In verse 8 of Hebrews chapter 4, it says, For if Jesus had given them rest, speaking of the Israelites of old, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? 
There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works. And so we see that the first point of rest discussed in this chapter is that we are to cease from our own works. Because our own works are all about our motives. That's why he says in verse 12, The word of God is quick, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of sunder of soul and spirit, of the joints and marrow. And now notice this. The word of God is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And what's being pointed out here is that often our intentions defile our works. And this is often where it becomes confusing because many want to teach us that we are saved and therefore works do not obtain salvation. And while that is true, we are told in verse 11, let us labor, let us make an effort with earnest, diligent desire. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. So we are not saved by good works. We are saved unto good works. If we are saved, if we have been born again, we're going to do what pleases the Father. Therefore, works will follow. And so it's all about the intentions of our heart. So what we have to understand is that the old covenant was based around obedience. The second covenant is based around surrender. Now, the second point we could take from this idea of rest is to look upon the people of Israel. They were striving very diligently to enter into the promised land. And this would be a time of rest once they had conquered all of their enemies. And we are to learn from their example. We are in a battle today against our oppressor, sin and the father of sin. Yet there is coming a day of rest. There is coming what is called the millennial reign, a thousand years with Christ upon earth. And during that time, there will be no disobedience, there will be no rebellion, there will be no sin, there will be no pain, there will be no suffering. We will be released from our oppressor, and we will be in a state of rest. And we are to work very diligently in this life, in a place of surrender, unto the things that bring our God pleasure, so that we can ensure we enter into that rest. And it takes labor, it takes effort to lower oneself and remain in a surrendered position because we are so prone to be active, to be working, to be busy. Yet the command of God is that we be still and know that he is God. Now, I'm not sure if this statement that I just made raced through your mind or if it's had a place to settle within your heart. But let me say that again. It is difficult for us as human beings to remain in a lowered, still, quiet position before our Lord because we are so prone to be active, to be busy, and to be working. And yet our position as his followers is to remain surrendered always. And so we are to examine every intent of our heart to determine the intentions of our works. And that's why we're told in verse 16, after we have examined ourselves, to ensure that our heart and our spirit is in the proper place of surrender, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. Now I encourage you to look up that word boldly in the Greek because it doesn't mean boldly like we're thinking. It doesn't mean confidently. It actually means after. The word means behind. And so it indicates that we are to come after the nature of Jesus. Just as Jesus was surrendered to the will of the Father, so are we to be. And so as we were reminded in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, once we have cleansed ourselves, just like the priests did in the days of the temple before they went before the presence of the Lord, once we have cleansed ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the Spirit, and we have perfected holiness in the fear of God, we come as humble servants Now let us come behind Jesus in the nature, character, and attitude of Jesus unto the throne of grace. And it is then, and it is there that we shall obtain mercy. And we will find grace to help us in our time of need. Because we have come dependent upon the Father. 
Well, we're going to close there today, friends. And I hope that this message has been clear. I hope that it hasn't added to any more confusion that you may have already had. I hope that you can see that the Almighty has called us unto a place of rest. Rest from our works in order to obtain something that we don't deserve. And by working so hard, we now think we deserve it. We now think that we've earned it. And the eternal rest that comes in knowing him, in trusting him, and surrendering to him. It's such a simple truth that it's unfortunate that it causes such confusion. And yet, as we learn when we study the Bible, it is the simple things that are the deeper things of God. We are such complex creatures that we complicate the most simple of things. And that's why Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled, tricked Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. I trust today, friend, that you will both learn and cling to that simplicity. Now, as he wills, and until next time, I truly love you, friends, and I'll see you on the next video.